air, oxygen, whatever you wanna think about when you're thinking about breathing. Obviously for us, it's something that we think about because we are terrestrial animals and we breathe in oxygen from the atmosphere. Now, what we sometimes forget is that our fish are also animals that require oxygen. And just because they're underwater doesn't mean that they still don't need air to breathe. So today I'm gonna to talk about a situation that I had where I had some fish that weren't getting the oxygen that they need, how I normally handle the situation, and also a new product that I discovered recently that's also helping in the aid of adding oxygen to my aquariums. Now, before we get into oxygen in the aquarium and the situation that I had, I do wanna thank all of you for watching my videos as it does very much help the channel. And I also wanna thank the sponsor for today's video, Into the AM. Into the AM is a team of artists and creators that formed an apparel company to share a common vision of developing premium apparel that elevates self-expression while focusing on comfort by using the highest quality materials and eco-friendly inks. Into the AM has dozens of cool designs to choose from, covering many categories including t-shirts and tank tops, hoodies and jackets, hats, and even joggers and shorts. Use the link and discount code below to shop at Into the AM and find your clothing piece to express what drives you. So as you can see, I do love my Into the AM shirt, so don't forget to check out the link below. Use the code for your discount. Okay, so let's talk about your fish breathing underwater. So fish have organs that are called gills, and the gills are able to extract oxygen from the water column allowing them to function as animals, right? So animals need oxygen and that's how they get their oxygen. Now, some fish do have additional organs like a labyrinth organ as an example that you'll find on like bettas and uh, you know, garamis and they're able to take uh, oxygen directly from the surface of the water, but they still have gills and they still will take the O2 from the water column as do most fish. Now, there are ways of making sure that your aquariums have adequate oxygen. So you can use things like surface agitation. So surface agitation means having the surface of the water, the top surface being agitated. So movement in that water is allowing for what's called a gas exchange. So that allows gases that are in the water to be released into the atmosphere and oxygen and other gases that are in the atmosphere to go into the water column. So when you have that agitation, whether it's from the wind like outside or currents, or if you're in your aquarium, it could be a power head or a, an overflow or an out, outlet tube from a canister filter or, a, or the flow of a hang on the back filter, obviously air driven filters like sponges, etc. Anything that's making the water ripple at the surface is allowing for that gas exchange. Now there have been studies that show certain types of agitation or air stones add more dissolved oxygen into the water column, air stones being very high on that list. Now I like to use air driven filters in pretty much all of my aquariums because it's economical, it's very easy to clean and I made videos about this before um, and I'll put a link up here down below and you can check out those videos. So air driven filters are great because they're economical, they're easy to use, but they also add oxygen in the water column. By one, I like to use air stones in my filters. So you're getting that additional um, oxygen being pumped into the water. And then you also have that surface agitation that happens when the bubbles and things like that are popping at the surface. Now in one of my aquariums back here, my African Cichla tank, this 90 gallon five foot tank back here, I used to have some sponge filters in there in conjunction with a canister filter. And between the canister filter outflow and the sponge filter, uh, the water coming, the, the bubbles coming up from the air stone inside that sponge filter, I had plenty of oxygen in this aquarium, even though there's a lot of fish. So more fish in the tank, they're breathing more, right? They're taking in more oxygen from that dissolved water. So you have to make that, that uh, from the water column. So you wanna make sure that you have uh, good oxygenation in any tank that has a lot of fish in there. Well, a few months ago, I changed some filtration. I took out my sponge filters um, because I wanted to use another air-driven filter, which is the Zis Bubble Bed Bio-Moving Bed Filter. But I really like those. I use them in my Oscar tank and I've made videos about them before. Um, and I also have the canister filter in there still. Now, what I did with the canister filter, someone actually reached out to me from a company called Grow Greeny. And they have this, uh, basically this Venturi device that you can attach to like a sump outlet or a power head outlet. And it basically forces air through that outlet and creates that same effect that like a 
high powered air stone would do. So I um, actually installed it in this tank and it's got amazing bubbles that shoot through. Now here's the problem that I had. I actually was doing some maintenance and I mistakenly hit the switch where the power that powers the uh, canister filter. So there's a switch on that on that uh, power strip that I have that that the power head or that the uh, canister filter is connected to and I had hit the off switch or whatever it was. So it was not running for several hours. So I did that water change at like five or six in the afternoon slash early evening. And I, I noticed it the next day around 12.30 p.m. So it had gone many hours with the canister filter turned off. And the reason why I caught it is I came in this room, the fish room, which is my basement, doing some other stuff. I uh, wanted to do something here on my computer. I turned on the lights from my phone. And as soon as I turned on the lights, I looked at this tank and I thought, what's going on? The fish are not behaving normally. They were all at the surface. Uh, I don't know why I'm doing this. Imagine this is the top of the, the, the aquarium. They're all kind of at the surface of the of the water, getting trying to get oxygen, right? And I could tell that something was wrong. And then I realized, oh no, the, the uh, canister filter was off. And so there was a little bit of surface agitation from the, um, the Zis filter in there, just a few bubbles popping, but it's very low flow. So the oxygen was down. So immediately I made sure that I, you know, purged and put connected or uh, made sure that the power was on the uh, canister filter to get that water flowing right away. I actually did a partial water change. So I did about a 20% water change because I wanted to pump in some oxygenated water right away. And also just because that canister filter was stagnant for several hours, I didn't want additional, you know, nitrate, ammonia in there, that kind of thing. So did a 20% water change, uh, pumped in some fresh water, obviously turned the canister filter back on um, with that Venturi system. But my, what I also did is I made sure to install an air stone in the aquarium again. So what I did is I just ran a split T off of one of the air lines that drops down from the ceiling. So what you can't see is behind all of these sound panels, these black panels on the wall, there's there's a like a PVC system that runs around the whole ceiling, and I just and I just tap into those and I run air lines down because that's plugged into a central air pump. So I just ran a T off of that and ran an air stone in there. So that way, regardless of whether the canister filter is on or off, there is a secondary system which is the air pump that will pump oxygen into that tank. So. Yes, lesson learned, you know, double check to make sure your filters are turned back on, especially in an overcrowded situation. Um, I do think that having that Venturi on the canister filter is helping as well. I'll put a link down below. I don't get anything from them. Um, they sent me them for free. I got a few of them to try in different tanks and sumps and like version one and version two, but I don't get paid from them or anything. There's no discount code, but I'll just put that link down below. They're all made here in the US. So just kind of a, a local hobbyist that has this kind of small business. But uh, anyway, so I made sure that I have an air stone and I think that it's important for you to learn from my mistake by one, making sure that you don't turn off your equipment, but also make sure that you do have adequate aeration happening in your aquarium, especially if it's like a cichlid tank or something that is overstocked. So hopefully this video was helpful for all of you in learning a little bit about making sure that you have proper aeration happening in your crams. If you'd like to learn about how to make the aquarium hobby a lot easier, then check out this link right here.